right guys, so let's start to look at a table problem. We're gonna use the same setup. So data was collected from a group of people about whether they drink tea or coffee. The information is shown in the Venn diagram and I didn't repeat the Venn diagram here. We're just gonna refer back to the one we used in number two, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna represent this information now in a two-way table. So I'm gonna scoot this up just a little bit so we have a little bit better of a view. And then I'm gonna refer back, I'm gonna bring my old Venn diagram from number two right up in here so we can see both of these things happening. And then let's try and figure out where all of these go. So there's these four numbers that were in our Venn diagram and we need the, these four numbers, all right, not in the totals, not in the, the column or more, uh, row totals, but I need these four cells to get filled in with these four numbers. So there's always these four regions, whether you're looking at a tree, a Venn, or a table. And so let's, let's start to think about this. So if I were to put my pencil here in this first cell, you can see I drink tea and I drink coffee, right? So that's the folks that do both. And when we refer back to the Venn diagram, that's these five folks. So I'm gonna put the number five here, okay? Now, I like to do the diagonals first. You can go in any order, but I'm gonna go over to this set of folks. So if I put my cell, uh, my pencil in the, in the cell where I do not drink tea and I do not drink coffee, but these are the neither folks. And if you remember from here, there's the neithers down here at nine. So I'm gonna put nine in my table, okay? So here are the boths, here are the neithers, and then these are gonna be one or the other, and we gotta figure out which one. So if I put my, cell, my pencil in this cell, Right? It looks like I drink tea, but I do not drink coffee. So I drink tea, do not drink coffee. So who are the folks that drink tea, but do not drink coffee? Right here, right? If I put my pencil here, I drink tea, but I do not drink coffee. So it's the, these 15 folks, right? And over here, if I look, I'm drinking coffee because my pencil's in that row, but I am not drinking tea. So if I am drinking coffee and not drinking tea, I'm one of these 12 folks. All right, so I've mapped my Venn diagram onto my table. I'm gonna remove this because I don't need it anymore. And then let's just fill in the totals. We're gonna use the totals for these probability questions below. So it looks like I've got 20 here, 21 here. Um, if I go to the row totals, I got 12 plus five or five plus 12, if you go in order, 17. Um, 15 plus nine, I'm looking at 24. I always like to just do a quick check and make sure my row totals and my column totals are the same number, just to make sure I haven't missed um, a number somewhere, because sometimes that will happen. So let me try 17 plus 24. That's looking like 41. And I wanna check that against my row totals of 20 and 21, and that was also 41. So I'm, I'm good with the table. I've got everything that I need or everything that I can get so far with the table. So then let's start to go further into these problems where it says use the table to find the probability that a person drinks tea. Now we've technically, we've crunched this number back in number two. All right, we're not gonna get a different answer than what we got in number two. We're just gonna use it with a table. So I see probability right, and I wanna drink tea. All right, so I gotta find all the folks that drink tea. So if I'm looking at my table, here's the drink tea column, right? There were 20 of them. That would be my numerator out of my grand total of 41. If you're dealing with a table, almost every probability will have a denominator of whatever this is, this number in the bottom right is. The only time it won't, um, and we'll, we'll get there, is um, when we have a conditional probability. When you have a conditional probability, you, you've got that um, your numerator is a fraction, your denominator is a fraction, and then the, you're multiplying by reciprocals. We've done it a couple times, but I just wanna make sure I'm saying it out loud. Most of the time, your denominator will always be that number in the bottom right-hand corner. Okay, so as we go through here, I see probability that I drink both tea and coffee. So I see the and lighting up. Right? And I go, okay, well, I'm on a table problem. The and lives where the row and the column overlap. So let's see, here's the drink tea column, right? Here's the drink coffee row. 
So I can see that my numerator is going to be five. And again, my denominator is gonna be that, that number that's in the bottom right-hand corner. So we've got the probability of tea and coffee, and that's gonna be five out of 41. Okay. Oh, and I can get the decimals for these. I, I didn't, I forgot to do it on part I. Let me go ahead and go through that. So we could do 20 out of 41. That would have been about 49%. Okay, and let me do five out of 41, see what we're getting. We are getting about 12%, okay? All right, so we've got that. So now let's, let's move on, right? If we scroll down just a little bit, we're seeing that I wanna do, what is the probability that a person drinks tea or coffee? So, so the word that's standing out for me here is the or. So I have a formula for that. We have formula number one from our formula sheet. So let me go do it that way. And I'm just gonna write up here what that formula was. That was the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. All right, so you've got that, that list of formulas you can use and formula one and formula two you can always use. So now what I need to do is take the letters A and B and swap them out with T and C for my particular problem. So I know the probability of tea or coffee is equal to the probability that someone drinks tea plus the probability that someone drinks coffee minus the probability that someone drinks tea and coffee. And I gotta subtract out the overlap. All right, so if I look at this, I want this number. Um, we calculated this one in part I. We calculated this one in part II, so I really only need this guy. So I need the probability of coffee, but let me put these numbers in. We've got 20 out of 41, all right? And then I wanna subtract out eventually five out of 41. Okay. So the only number I'm missing so far is this probability that a person drinks coffee. So let's go figure out, out of my 41 folks, all right, how many drank coffee? It looks like 17 of them did because that is the row total here. So this fraction will be 17 out of 41, okay? And then it's just, it's a matter of, let's, let's crunch these, these fractions in our calculator. So I've got 20 out of 41, 17 out of 41, and I need to lose five out of 41 with that. So when I crunch that, we see we get the decimal 0.78. If you wanted to see what it was as a fraction, you can convert it to a fraction. And the 32 is coming from, right, 20 plus 17 is 37. 37 minus five is 32. So if you remember from your math days, if you have fractions um, and you wanna add or subtract them, you need common denominators, which we have. We, all of our denominators are 41. So I just need to add and subtract the numerator. So 20 plus 17 minus five is the number 32. And you can write the answer in either form. So you can tell me this is 32 out of 41, or you could tell me it was 78%. I'm fine with either answer. Now, if you become proficient enough in tables, you can actually see the folks that we wanna to add together. So, so go with me for a moment. I wanna include, if we look, I wanted the tea drinkers. So I wanted these 20 folks right here. Eh? I wanted this entire row, All right? But I also wanted the coffee drinkers, yeah? And so you can see I want all the people in this row, I should say this column, plus these extra 12. And let's just do mental math real quick. What is five plus 15? That's 20. What is 20 plus 12? That is 32. So these were the 32 folks that I was interested in. Or you could look at it as you wanted everybody but these nine folks, right? And you could have used the complement rule. So there's always options as you're going through here. But the reason I always stress the formula is because the formula works whether you're using a tree or a table or a Venn. That formula will always work. So I, when I'm starting out in probability, I always say use a formula. And then as you become more comfortable and more proficient in the methods, you can, you can look for your little shortcuts. All right, so with that, let's, let's start to look at this one. So I got for part four here, what is the probability that a person drinks tea given they drink coffee? 
All right, so the buzzword here I'm seeing is given. Okay, so I want the probability that a person drinks tea given they drink coffee. And if I'm gonna do a conditional probability, I'm gonna use formula number two. I'm gonna write that just to the side here. So the probability of A given B is probability of A and B in ratio to the probability of B. All right, so I'm gonna use formula number two, but again, instead of using A and B, I'm gonna use my letters, right? T given coffee. So I'm gonna have T given C. So this will look like T and C over the probability of C. So let me go write that out. I want the probability of T and C. Oops, just kidding. Let me, it's a conditional probability to start us off with. All right, so I want the probability, excuse me, of T given C. It is equal to the probability of T and C over the probability of C, okay. So here we go. Let's see if we can find these two probabilities, right? So my numerator is going to be a fraction. My denominator is going to be a fraction. All right, so T and C. If we want the and and we're dealing with a table, we want to look for where the row and the column overlap, right? Now, we did that up in part two, so I'm just going to write that this is 5 out of 41, okay? We found that number in part four. And actually, we found the probability of the coffee drinkers right here, right? There were 17 out of the 41 folks. And if you're not remembering where I got that, right, I want the probability that someone drinks coffee. How many drank coffee? 17 out of 41. All right. So as I was saying when we started this, almost all of your probabilities will have a denominator that's this bottom right-hand number, with the exception of the conditional probability. Because in the conditional probability, your numerator is a fraction and your denominator is a fraction. And we have to do a little algebra here, and ultimately the 41s are gonna cancel out. That's always how this goes. So we're gonna say this is five out of 41 divided by 17 out of 41. And then we're gonna multiply by a reciprocal. So we're gonna have five out of 41 times 41 out of 17, right? And as always happens, those denominators ultimately divide out and we have five out of 17. So this is the only time that your end answer doesn't have 41 in its denominator. And that's because we know that people drink coffee, right? That was a given. So we're already only focusing on the 17 people that drink coffee and out of those 17, five also drink tea. So that's where we're getting the five out of 17. I'm not considering the 41 people anymore. I've reduced my universe to just these 17 folks. And out of those 17 folks, five drank tea. And that's where this, this ratio is coming from. And if I plug that into my calculator, let's do five out of 17. And we are looking at about 29%. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna get into um, the mutually exclusive formulas and the independent formulas. So let's see how these are going. So for part C, I'm seeing the phrase, right? Are drinking coffee and drinking tea mutually exclusive? Okay, I see mutually exclusive. That's another word for disjoint. So that's gonna be formula number five. So with formula number five, again, I'll just write it off to the side here. So we have it for reference. I wanna see is the probability of A and B equal to zero. I'll put a little question mark over it. That will ultimately give us our answer. If this probability is zero, the answer to this question is yes. If that probability is any number other than zero, the answer to this question is no. So let's, let's go figure it out. And again, instead of A and B, I'm gonna use coffee and tea. So is the probability of coffee and t equal to zero. Well, let's find out. So coffee and t, again, we're on a table problem. The and always occurs where your row and your column overlap. All right, and we did this back in part ii, but I'll, I'll scooch this down just so we can see the, see the table again, just to run through it. All right, so where do my column of t and my row of coffee overlap? Right here at five. So I'm gonna go five out of 41. 
Okay, so in going 5 out of 41, I want to know is that number equal to 0? And I think you can hear it, right? This is the decimal point 0.12 that is not equal to 0. That almost looks like a 6. Give me a moment. So the answer to this is no. These events are not mutually exclusive. And this was the same answer we got when we did this in question two. It hasn't changed. It's possible to drink tea and coffee. Plenty of people do both at the same time. So our, our last option here is, uh, or our last question, excuse me, is are these events independent? So is drinking coffee and drinking tea mutually, ex oh, not mutually exclusive, excuse me, independent if I read this. So I'm going to highlight the word independent. Now when it comes to independent events, you have two formulas that you could potentially use. So let me write them down here. All right, so we want to either test is the probability of A given B equal to the probability of A, or you can use this one, the probability of A and B. Oops. Is that equal to the probability of A times the probability of B? So for the way these problems are set up for this particular one, um, both of them are, are not too bad to run. And why I say that is if I wanted to use the conditional version, well, I did ca calculate a conditional probability up in part four, so this wouldn't be too terrible. I have this number already and I could compare it to that one. Not too bad. Um, we've calculated the and a bunch of times already in here, and I know the probability of coffee and tea, so I actually have calculated all of these numbers. So it wouldn't be too terrible to do this. I'm going to do it both ways just so we can see it. Because we calculated the numbers, like, it, it just won't be too, like I said, not too terrible. So let me try this. Now, because in part four I did T given C, that's the order I'm going to go in here. If you wanted to, you could go C given T, but I don't want to. I, I already crunched this number. So I want to see if these two things are equal. So is the probability of tea given coffee the same as the probability of tea? Well, the probability of tea given coffee, we found it, it was 29%. The probability of tea, we calculated that all the way back up in part one, that was 49%. These two numbers are not equal, so these events are not independent. scooch that up just so we can see it a little better. Okay. Well, let me try it now with formula four. Um, I'll go T and C here, and then I'll put a T and a C. All right, so here we go. Oh, I think I'm going to sneeze. Um, I'll just keep going until I do it. T and C. Is that equal to the probability of T? times the probability of C. Well, let's find out. We've done T and C. T and C we found out in part two, this was 12%. Is that equal to the probability of T, which was 49%, times the probability of C? Now the probability of C, we found it up here, it was 17 out of 41. I didn't get the decimal for it, so let me crunch that while I'm going through this um, and see what we got. So 17 out of 41 was about 41%. Okay, so is 0.12 equal to 49% times 41%? Let's find out. So I will multiply this number by 0.49, and I find out it's about 20%. So 0.12 does not equal 0 0.20. So again, I am still concluding that these events are not independent. All right, so we've taken a look at 
the same set of data using VENs and using tables, and we got the same results. All right, so we're gonna work another table problem, and then after that, we'll head on into tree diagrams.